So let's move on to the water. Um, so recently completed projects on the water side. This is uh, from about 2017-18 is the Davis Road project. What we had there was a um, transmission main for raw and finished water that ran down that road um, on Davis Road that at the time it was installed was a dirt road. And um, the, it was quite shallow. They put it in with a drag line, these lines. So they were only in places three or four feet below the surface of the road. And we didn't want to risk the loss of our water supply. So we did this um, in, in preparation for the Davis Road improvements that the county was going to do. And that was about $20 million project. We did a few things with it. We did the transmission um, main movements. And, and also we did a, abandonment of the mains that were existing in the road, as well as some improvements at Cotchville Pump Station, which I'll show you. So here's some of the transmission line work. What you're seeing there is a bypass that we put in to maintain our supply while we were working on the lines. Um, but you can see the scope of it, and I can tell you I was there. That's the picture on the far right was after all night long, uh, the sunrise. So uh, we, were, we were there all night long many times. Um, this is some of the improvements done to the Cotchville pump station. There was a new VFD driven pump that more matches our current needs for raw water uh, flows. And uh, it much more matches what we, what we need at this time. That was done uh, um, as part of that project. Another thing that we've done recently is we moved the original uh, Caterpillar um, trailer mount generator. We originally purchased it for Cotchville, but it turned out that we found that the Kohler, uh, not Kohler, the um, Waukesha generators at the treatment plant that are inside of it are nearing the end of their service life, so we decided to move this because of its size. It's a, I'm trying to remember, two point, no, 1.6 uh, megawatt generator. Um, these generators that are in the plant are 1.2. Um, there's one on each feed line, but this generator will take the place of those um, at some point and will also, between it and our elevated storage, uh, leave us in good shape for power loss. So we moved that to the water plant because of the problems and the needs of the uh, Waukesha generator repairs that we had to do. This is a minor project, Freeland Pump Station Roof Repair. Our own staff did that. I just thought I'd show it as something that our staff did. This is out on Freeland Road, just east of Lawndale. So some anticipated projects to complete by June 30. Um, the Cotchell Raw Water Pump Station Improvement Phase 2 is currently under construction. We are replacing one of the large constant speed pumps, which I'll show you in a picture in a minute with a second VFD driven pump like the one that was in phase one I showed you. Um, we are adding a pad mount on-site generator for the needs of the Cotchville site. Uh, Cotchville is a raw water storage facility. There's 180 million gallons of Lake Huron water stored there for our needs if something happens to the pipeline supply. Um, we're also adding some uh, blending capabilities at a cost of about 2.36 million. Uh, so here's the old um, dual speed pumps that we had at Cotchville. We still have one, number four, is, that's in the foreground there. That pump's still there. Uh, pump five is being removed, and we're retaining the parts and so on as backup to our existing pump, the number four that's remaining. Um, so that's part of what's being done. Uh, you can see on the left, that's the sister VFD-driven pump. The one that I showed you in the original phase one is behind it there in the picture. And then on the right is um, we put a new actuator on the bell, ball valve for pump four. The reason we did that is uh, ball valves are good for throttling. And if we needed to throttle, we could put with an actuator, we could set it at different points and get the flow we wanted from that larger pump if we ended up in that situation and need. So we just added a, a operator. And there's the new pad mount generator. It's, if it hasn't been tested, it will be shortly. It's nearing um, effective service. And okay, not going forward. There we go. 
because it just didn't push hard enough. Another project that um, we did with maintenance and service is on our transmission system to one of the wholesale customers, Frankenmuth, um, the city of Frankenmuth and Frankenmuth Township. The line that feeds them on Junction Road uh, has some hot soils and that main keeps breaking and it particularly likes to break when there's something big going on like Winterfest or mm -hmm. something like that. So we put in a parallel mine um, lot main for that at a cost of 2.47 million. That is nearing completion now. So those are some of the things we've been working on. Um, some projects we're working on now. Um, as you know, we the lead service line replacement, we talked about that. We got a $5 million principal forgiveness loan, essentially like a grant. Um, and we hope to get more of those so that we can either keep that fee low or even end it sooner if, the, if it turns out. One thing I wanted to mention, just so everyone knows, water systems are not allowed to make a profit. We're not legally allowed to be profitable. We can keep a reasonable reasonable amount of fund balance for emergency need and that I'm trying to set that up for four to six months worth of operational cost to have on hand for our needs and a good example is the, of that is the pandemic you know we didn't we actually held back on some of our work that we planned to do because we weren't sure what was going to happen to our revenue stream during the pandemic so that's partly why some of this didn't happen as quickly as we originally thought so anyway moving on <clears throat> There's the elevated storage tank. Uh, that's an um, architectural rendering. To be honest, I think it's going to be bigger than that. Uh, it's going to be a fairly large tank, but we have about $15 million in grant. Uh, the connections that will be required are going to cost us about $4.5 million. Here's the, um, some gear for the new generator. Um, the reason we're doing this is, and I won't go into great detail, but Consumers is planning on shutting down the baseload plant um, at, in Essexville, the current plant, and that's the last one in the area. Um, and they're doing it a year earlier than they originally said, so we're putting in this automated start gear for our generators to help us respond if, if we lose power um, due to unknown event, you know, either a brownout, a blackout, or something like that. And the reason that's so important is there's two things that protect your water supply that are in it every day, pressure and chlorine. If we lose either one of those, we can have contamination. So it's very important that we provide that pressure until we can get power back on and the pumps running again. So that's why this interim project for the generators is so important. And then as time goes by, after elevated storage is installed, we'll be able to more effectively be prepared for any kind of a loss there. The treatment optimization study, that's uh, still to be determined. We have done some studies and so far we've found that we can make do with um, a lot less investment than we originally thought. But we're looking at disinfection byproducts control, we're looking at um, uh, oh, corrosion control for lead and copper. And you know we use what's called lime stabilization, but there are other methods, so we wanna make sure we're using our best method to protect our public. This is one we wanted to do and we were planning to do, but it turned out to be way more expensive than I uh, thought we could afford. So we're reevaluating that. Um, it's, it's a, it turns out it's a $37 million project. When I first started looking at it, I thought it was about a $6 million project. So uh, I'm rethinking that one. And so will Mike as time goes by. So we'll, we'll look at that approach moving forward. Um, there is some masonry repairs and roof work that's needed at the water tree implant. Um, that's uh, estimated at about a million dollars coming up. Um, some smaller project here with, you can see additional concrete deterioration that's in the train shed under, in the back of the water plant, and then a Cotchville boiler that needs to be replaced, it's original. Um, similar to the Frankenmuth main, uh, the Birch Run parallel line that we're looking to do is in the same, the original line is in the same kind of soil, so we're having regular breaks, and you can see that's what a picture of, is a water main break there as you see it running down into the ditch. Um, so we're also looking at that at a cost of about 3.6 million. Some additional future projects is we're looking at both finished and raw water transmission improvements, um, water treatment plant options, you know, what are we going to do with that? This plant is nearing 100 years old. 
So we have to decide, are we putting more money into this plan? Are we gonna look at maybe another one? We'll have to decide that. You will all have to decide that at some point. I am doing studies to help us make a decision on what makes the most sense financially for that. And then the ongoing distribution and lead service line replacements.